Environment is at the forefront of everybody's mind. And we in South Africa are unbelievably blessed with the environment in which we find ourselves. The beaches, the flora, the fauna. We are blessed almost beyond understanding. And one might say that uh, South Africa was built on the back of the minerals that the good Lord put in our land. And that, I guess, is true. But that is a wasting resource. Our environment and our conservation of that environment is something that lasts forever. Minister, it's great to have you here with us. And I think your ministry is, I believe, the most important ministry in the government. And I don't believe I'm exaggerating there. And Minister, forgive me for being presumptuous enough but to suggest that the two important themes that you as Minister have to look after. And the first of those is to know that you have to work with nature. You can't impose your will on nature. And you only have to look at the, the way the environment, the way the, the weather in the world is changing to know that when nature decides to do something, man is very puny in that situation. And so we look to the minister and the government to work with nature to preserve our environment, to look after it, to enhance it. And I think this is the most important thing that can be done for the future of the country and something that we can really be proud of because I believe here in South Africa we are way ahead of the rest of the world. But we have to work with nature, not think we can tell nature what to do. And the second theme is the other really important element of what we need here in this special country of ours. And that is growth, employment. All those unemployed youths need to find jobs. And tourism is the, almost the best way of creating jobs per tourist. The number of jobs that are created is, I would think, higher than any other industry. And to do that, we again have to preserve, look, and nurture what we're selling to those tourists. They're not going to come if there's pollution everywhere, if the beaches are covered with debris. They're coming because they want to look at South Africa, the pristine South Africa. And so, Minister, again, I think you have a, a really special task to set that scene. And it's not the Minister of Tourism who is going to do that. It is your ministry, because the Minister of Tourism can be the Archangel Gabriel, and he will have no success in attracting people to the country if our environment isn't there to be sold and for them to admire and see what we're doing. My being here today demonstrates my commitment to listening to our scientists and my support to the Oppenheimer generation's struggle to leave the world a better place from that in which we found it, making sure that in the course of protecting the environment, we also create work for the many people in this country who are dependent on the biodiversity economy for their livelihood. And in fact, I saw a statistic yesterday that indicates that about 450,000 people are employed in what we call the biodiversity economy. And that is equal to the employment in mining in our country. So it is a very significant economic and employment sector. I have just returned from the 2019 <clears throat> UN Climate Action Summit held at the United Nations headquarters in New York. The summit aimed to boost climate ambition, to accelerate action to implement the Paris Climate Accord, and to ensure that we collectively prevent the mean global temperature from rising by more than 1.5 degrees above industrial level. It was a day of tough talk, but also of inspiration. This inspiration came not only from the countries and companies committing themselves to the required changes, but also from the practical and innovative work of the winners of the 2019 UN Global Climate Action Awards.
with projects ranging from an in-app mini program that's helped to plant 122 million trees to a climate positive burger that's apparently taking the fast food industry by storm. These interventions remind us that although hard, scientific research and innovation will play a central role in our ability to adapt to and mitigate the conditions that cause climate change. Returning to your conference and the theme of advancing conservation consciousness, I thought it important to share with you that the Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries is in the process of exploring the concept of a Citizens' Environmental Awareness Index to be based on the results of an annual independent national public environmental awareness survey. As part of this process, the department, in partnership with the CSIR, has just concluded research on environmental awareness surveys that have been conducted before in our country. Not surprisingly, we found that the country has never conducted specific national surveys on the level of environmental awareness amongst our citizens. Consequently, we have no baseline against which we can measure citizen consciousness raising interventions. There have been numerous surveys that have been conducted around specific environmental topics, most of them by masters and PhD students. And there have been some national surveys on water and waste services, as well as international surveys that look at the question of South Africans' consciousness of the issue of climate change. I believe that environmental degradation, loss of biodiversity, and climate change are everyone's issues. I believe this because everyone's lives are being impacted on right now by these realities.